Evening, YouTube. Perhaps you've wondered why I've gathered you here today. Well, obviously, if you've read the title, you know. What I'm going to show you today is basically reloading some buckshot. I've done several of them already. I don't want to show you all the steps, and I want to comply with YouTube's guidelines. So really, I'm only going to show the last step. In my previous quick video, I showed you how you could make a tool like this for quick counting out buckshot for an accurate count. In this one, I will take several shells that I've loaded that way and then load a couple more with the next best method I found, um, which is handy when you don't have the right diameter of tube on hand. And uh, in my video following this, hopefully, I will give you some pattern tests of these. Um, the primary purpose of this video, though, is to show you a basic concept for a load and how I arrived at it. So, I've got here the best reloading manual you can get for shotguns right now. Unfortunately, this one seems to be between printings. Hopefully, our CBS is about to come out with another edition. It's by far the most useful. And I was looking for loads that used the Federal 12S3 or 12S4 wads. These are really nice ones for buckshot. They have a sturdy column and they are much better suited to um, straight holes rather than tapered holes. I believe Claybusters makes a tapered hole version of it, either that or downrange, I forget which, um, which might be worth looking into. My experience is that as much as I like the Gun Club, STS, and Winchester AA holes, when you really want a big heavy payload, the straight holes seem to be a little bit nicer to work with. Um, they also tend to have a little bit higher quality crimp at the end if you're using the gold standard for straight wall holes, which is the federal gold metal. Now the 12S4 is the brown one. Anyway, if we happen to look down at this book, you'll notice that what we want is an ounce or an ounce and an eighth of shot at about 1400 feet per second for number four buck. An ounce is my preferred actually. Um, it leaves you moderate recoil and optimal penetration for uh, home defense or predators such as coyotes or um, cougars. Anyway, to me that is near perfect. You'll get um, about 15 or 16 inches of penetration in gel, just like you want. A really nice pattern with this wad. It's just about ideal. Maybe the only thing that could be better is a flight control, and that's arguable. That's sort of my next video is this with a choke. Oh man, just right. Anyway, if we look through Cheddite holes, we find that when we get to long shot powder and 1-2-S-3, you get 1,500 at about, uh, let's see how much, 36 grains, and then if you dial that back to the next combination, the same ingredients, at 33.6 grains, we get about 1,420. Okay, well really, we want about, what we're looking at, for number one buck, we want about 1,375 feet per second, which when you shorten it down to the barrel lengths people actually use, that means you want the book to list about 1400 feet per second. So what we find is at 33.6 grains with this wad and a Cheddite hull with the Cheddite primer of long shot, we get the appropriate velocity. And they list 1420 and my nearest bushing drops just a little bit under their weight. One of the things I love about this book is it lists the load in order of weight so you're not having to guess where they list a minimum and a max and you have no idea what your performance should be in between those you'll find the same load a little bit down the page plus a few grains of powder and so you can get a pretty reliable way of homing in on what you actually want to achieve and also knowing hey my uh, powder drops 0.1 grain over whatever it says is that going to be safe well you find the, in the same load down the page with two full greens more and you know oh it's okay that's pretty handy okay so now 
we know we have a suitable load for one and an eighth ounce, although one ounce at that velocity, we don't have good data. However, it's usually safe with shotgun to drop projectile weight by up to an eighth ounce. You just need to go and do a few test loads to make sure you get reliable burn and that your velocity is consistent. Um, obviously, shotgun loading is a lot more touchy than other loading. Don't go substitutions particularly upward, but substituting shot weight downward slightly is usually okay. That's the caveats. Go and test it. Now, if we flip ahead to the federal gold medal data, we find we have way more choices. Um, I don't have anything against the Cheddite holes. Oh, I should mention too, when you're dealing with the Cheddite holes, they come in two flavors. One looks like this. It's gold um, colored plated steel. And the other looks like this, which is zinc plated steel. I would not waste my time with the zinc plated steel. I would just go with the gold. They're free anyway. But the difference is on the inside you will find that the zinc plated ones are paper. I don't know how well that shows up, but that is a hacksaw in half zinc plated one and you can see it has a fiber base wad. Why we don't mess with the fiber base wads is they can absorb moisture and the fiber base wad can come apart. Now if it was the old days when that was all there was we'd just be really particular and make sure we weren't picking up old shells off the ground. But now that you can have something with a plastic base wad that doesn't degrade that way, there is no point in messing with it. Okay, so we look through and we find long shot, 32 grains, so a half grain less, yields 1420 with the same wad and the federal primer. And again, if we go down the page, we find different versions of the same load, more powder, a little bit less powder is okay too. Um, if we go look at it, the one ounce equivalent, we just go backwards in the book, one and an eighth ounce, one and an eighth ounce. We can find that one ounce data ends here and the fastest is 1400 feet per second which is mostly with international. Those are all with very light um, shot cups that aren't going to be suitable. So that data isn't particularly useful to us. But you can see when you're working with these federal gold medal holes, you have a lot of options. I would also put out that there's the caveat that these gold medals come in smooth and ribbed, and ones that look very similar to the ribbed that have fiber base wad that I have had come apart on me that they just say federal 12 gauge on the bottom minus the gold metal. They are not the same although sometimes the load data is the same and sometimes it isn't. You have to check in the book. Anyway, that is how I find what I'm looking for in a load that is likely going to be good. So far, I've tried a whole bunch of different versions of this recipe. This wad or the Clay Buster clone with an ounce or an ounce and an eighth of either number four or number one buck pushed to approximately 1400 um, and it patterns great. And it's going to be pretty close to optimal penetration. I mean, you want your impact velocity for number one to be 1375 and your impact or I mean, sorry, 1325, I've been saying that wrong, and your impact velocity for number four to be between 1375 and 1400. And so one ounce of number four buck is 25 pellets of the Remington field grade or 24 pellets of the... Um, Hornady, sorry, that's an ounce and an eighth equals that and reduce those by two pellets to get one ounce equivalents. Um, and for the number one buck, we find we want an ounce and an eighth is 14 pellets with the Hornady. I haven't tried the Remington equivalent. And um, 
the problem with that is you get an uneven stack. Number one buck stacks in neat little pairs of four inside the, in the shot cup, but the top two are domed, and then you get a crimp that looks like this. It would work. I wouldn't do it to a hole that I wanted to reuse, but that's ugly. Um, multiples of four are the way to go. You could go up in weight to 16, but I prefer to go down to 12 because uh, recoil and fast follow-up shot. 12 pellets at shotgun range is not bad. I certainly prefer 25 pellets at shotgun range hitting the same penetration depths, but I would rather have a good pattern and a reliable shell than a couple more pellets.